Yeah, you read that title correctly. Today we're tackling the question that has stumped philosophers for centuries. Our story begins during the Dark Ages, January 2021. I was just out of college, living in an apartment in Nashville with Nolan, the other trumpeter in the Lakes Brass Quintet, and I was halfway through my first year of teaching elementary general music. Now for a lot of teachers, this year was spent teaching on Zoom. But not this guy. I was in the trenches. And while teaching in person is preferable to teaching on Zoom, we were still limited in what we could do in a music classroom. I don't know if you can remember all the way back then, but we weren't allowed to sing more than 20 or 30 minutes, let alone pass out instruments. Heck, I spent most of my first year teaching going classroom to classroom on a cart. Needless to say, times were tough. And after Christmas, I decided it was finally time to get myself a pet. Now during the summer of 2020, I was looking at maybe getting a dog, but finally decided that was probably going to be too high maintenance for my lifestyle at the time. Flash forward to now, where I live with my girlfriend and her two dogs, who are the most high maintenance of dogs. But I love them so much. Now around this time, my friend Cassie had recently taken custody of a chinchilla, and I fell in love with the species. I decided this was the perfect pet for me. So I did my research, and before going back to school from winter break, I put together a cage, I bought all my supplies, I went to PetSmart, and I brought this little guy into my life. This is our composer for the day. Grogu. Yeah, that, I, yes, I named him Grogu. I like Star Wars, okay? Besides, just look at those ears. I even got him a Baby Yoda stuffed animal and a Baby Yoda bed, so shut up. And believe it or not, this isn't the first time Grogu has shown up on our channel. About a year ago, we posted our recording of John Williams' Yoda's theme that we lovingly refer to as Lullaby for Grogu, which you should totally check out now for some more Grogu antics. Needless to say, this guy lives up to his namesake. He's a mischievous little heck raiser who's extremely food motivated and can basically force jump. So fast forward about a month or so, we're talking February 2021, Grogu has settled into the apartment, I'm back in the trenches teaching, and my friend Nora just started student teaching on Zoom and was trying to come up with some creative lessons for her students. And she came up with an idea that involved her favorite little fur nephew. What if we got Grogu to compose music? <laughs> Now to understand how we got Grogu to actually compose a piece of music, we need to know a little bit about a style of music called aleatoric music, or chance music. In an aleatoric composition, the composer can leave musical elements up to chance. Maybe they give the performer different options of things to play at different times. Or they use chance to choose musical elements like the dynamics or the rhythms. One of the best examples of this kind of chance composition can be seen in the piece Music of Changes by minimalist composer John Cage. For this solo piano piece, Cage used the Chinese oracle book, the I Ching. I Ching? E I Ching? I Ching? However you pronounce it. I'm gonna stick with I Ching. The I Ching is otherwise known as the Book of Changes. Now using the Book of Changes can be a little bit complicated, but in simplest terms you can use a series of flipped coins in conjunction with symbols from the text to generate different outcomes. Cage used his experiments with the Book of Changes to determine things like pitch, note duration, and tempo in his composition. Now obviously, we did not make Grogu read the I Ching, but we really liked the idea of determining musical elements by chance. We just needed the right framework, and then it hit us. What if we used Grogu's love of snacks to encourage him to make compositional choices? For this piece, we decided to encourage Grogu to compose by using his favorite snack at the time, popcorn, which you should only give to your chinchillas as a very special treat. It's not like the most unhealthy thing for them. Like they can have one every once in a while. They've got sensitive tummies and here's the, okay, listen. In moderation, everything's in moderation. Everything's about moderation. Life is moderation. I'm moderating myself right now. For this piece, we decided to let Grogu choose the meter, the key, the mode, an emotion word, and even different melody fragments. We started with the meter. To do this, we laid out three index cards, each with a piece of popcorn on top. He had the options of 3-4, 4-4, and 6-8. And as you can see, he chose 6-8. Then we had to choose a key. To do this, we printed out 
everyone's favorite musical circle, the Circle of Fifths, and put one piece of popcorn on each of the 12 keys. Grogu chose C. Now, we weren't sure if he wanted C major or C minor, so we gave him the option of mode as well, and Grogu is a simple creature. And just like us humans, chinchillas do not like too many sharps and flats, so Grogu chose C major. Then we had Grogu pick an emotion word for his composition. He had the options of animated, spooky, crunchy, and melancholy. Hashtag because of Winn-Dixie cross-curricular vocabulary connections. Of those four words, Grogu chose animated. With all of these choices in place, Nolan and I sat down and wrote various melodic fragments that met the criteria of 6-8, C major, and somewhat animated. We printed out our fragments and let Grogu choose two. And once he chooses two, we had him choose which one to come first, giving us a final composition of eight measures that sounds something like this. <laughs> You might have noticed that I never actually brought Grogu into the studio to say hi, and that's because he can't. Last May, I brought him to the vet for his regular checkup, and the vet wanted to put him under anesthesia to get a look at his teeth. Something went wrong, and um, he never woke up, and I never got to say goodbye. As you can probably imagine, I felt a lot of different feelings at that time. Sadness, melancholy would actually be a good word there. Though I'm not proud of it, I was very angry. I mean, one minute he's in the car, perfectly healthy, nibbling my finger, and then the next I'm driving home with his ashes. I almost left the vet a review that read, The service was decent at best, but my chinchilla came out extra crispy. One star. No, 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 you cannot joke about that. You can break my heart, but you cannot break my use of humor as a coping mechanism. So what do you do when life takes an unexpected turn for the worse? We feel our feelings, we heal, and as artists, we find a way to make something beautiful out of that loss. Grogu never got to finish his piece. We are going to finish it. Nolan and I are currently in the process of coming up with different ways that we can use chance to write a secondary theme and make a fully fleshed out piece for Brass Quintet. And when we are done, we are going to share the recording here on YouTube and give away that sheet music for free. I know this video is a little bit different than what we've been making lately, but this is a project that Nolan and I have been excited about starting for months now. And though we miss Grogu a lot, we're really excited about finishing his work, because even though he's gone, he left us with something beautiful. So if you want to see how this piece comes out, stay tuned right here. We'll be showing you the process, and we'll be showing you the finished product when we get that done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.